Our solar system is one of over 500 known solar system in the entire Milky Way galaxy. We call it the solar system because everything in it is centered around the sun. The solar system came into being about 4.5 billion years ago when a cloud of interstellar gas and dust collapsed, resulting in a solar nebula, a swirling disk of material that collided to form the solar system. The solar system is located in the Milky Way Orient Star Cluster. Only 50% of stars in the galaxy host planetary system and one of those stars is our own sun. Revolving around the sun are eight planets. The planets are divided into two categories based on their composition, terrestrial and jovian. Terrestrial planets including Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars are primarily made of rocky materials. Their surfaces are solid. They don't have ring systems. They have very few or no moons and they are relatively small. Beyond the four terrestrial planets of the inner solar system lies the Jovian planets of the outer solar system. The Jovian planets include gas giants Jupiter and Saturn and the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. All four Jovian planets have multiple moons, support ring system, have no solar surface and are immense. Orbiting the terrestrial planets is the asteroid belt, a flat disk of rocky objects full of remnants from the solar system formation. From microscopic dust particle to the largest known object, the dwarf planet Ceres. Another disk of space, Debris, lies much further out and orbits the Jovian planets. The icy Kuiper belt. Apart from asteroids, the Kuiper belt is also home to dwarf planets such as Pluto and is the birthplace of many comets. Beyond the Kuiper belt is the Oud cloud, a vast spherical collection of icy debris. It is considered the edge of the solar system, since that is where the gravitational and physical influence of the sun end. This is our sun. This ball of incandescent nuclear fusion holds our solar system together. The sun has been studied and observed since ancient times. Astronomers today still study it and are constantly learning new things about the sun, the center of the solar system. The sun is a star not so different from the star that can be seen in the night sky. The sun is the doorway for us to study about stars because the sun in many times closer to us than any other star which allows us to study more about it. The sun may be close to us compared to other stars, but it is still very far from the earth, about 93 million miles or 115 million kilometers away. Although the sun is so far away, it only takes sunlight about 8 minutes to reach the earth because light travels so fast. The sun is so large that if it were empty, more than a million ants could fit inside. If you collected everything in the solar system, including the sun, the planets, the dark planets, comets, asteroids and moons, the sun would account for more than 99% of it, with everything else adding up to less than 1% of the solar system. But comparing to other billion of stars in the Milky Way, our sun is average or even small in size. It is even called as a yellow dwarf. In a star, elements like helium, hydrogen and iron are found in the sun's atmosphere that is the corona. We can really observe these thanks to NASA. Every 10 seconds, NASA Solar Dynamic Observatory takes pictures of 10 different wavelengths, temperatures and layers of our sun. 
Each elements emit light at different wavelengths. Each color filter we see here is a different heat level and wavelength so that the scientists can look at the sun layers. These gases are held together by the sun's gravity which creates such intense heat and pressure that it causes nuclear fusion, a process in which hydrogen atom fuses to create helium at its core. The sun's core is about 27 million degree Fahrenheit or 15 million degree Celsius. The surface of the sun is only about 10,000 degree Fahrenheit or 5,500 degree Celsius. The sun does not have a solid surface. The sun's gaseous surface is not calm and quiet. Instead, the sun is constantly moving and changing with sunspots and solar flares frequently marking its surface. All of the planets in the solar system orbit around the sun. In turn, the solar system orbits around the center of the galaxy in which we live, the Milky Way. It is estimated that the sun takes about 230 million years to complete an orbit of the galaxy. Since ancient times, humans have understood how important the sun is for life on earth. Without the energy provided by the sun's radiation, the earth would be dark, cold and uninhabitable. Even after the amount of knowledge we have acquired about the sun, it is still a mystery to us in many ways. The planet Mercury is named after the messenger of the Roman god because even the ancient could see how shift and fleeting it is in the sky. But it wasn't until recently that scientists began unraveling Mercury's many mysteries. Mercury is the smallest planet in our solar system. It is also the closest one to the sun, only about 36 million miles away. It usually cannot be seen easily. The only time to see Mercury from the Earth is during the twilight of sunrise or sunset. However, Mercury can be seen. It shines brightly, although it is the closest planet to the sun. Mercury is not the hottest because it has almost no atmosphere. The heat comes from the sun quickly escapes back into the space. It only has a very thin exosphere. This exosphere is made up of oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium and potassium wiped up from the planet's surface by solar wind. The lack of atmosphere and the close proximity to the sun also makes Mercury a planet of extremes. Mercury has no moons of its own and it has no rings. In appearance, Mercury closely resembles our moon. Mercury consists of approximately 70% metallic and 30% silicate materials. Because of this, Mercury's density is the second highest in the solar system at 5.427 g per centimeter cube, only slightly less than the planet with the greatest density Earth at 5.515 g per centimeter cube. Its surface gravity is only 3.7 m per square. Mercury's proximity to the Sun is also the reason behind its age, old repetition of being shift and fleeting. The Sun's gravity pulls harder on Mercury than any other planet and like all other planets, Mercury travels in an elliptical orbit, slowing down when it's further away from the Sun and accelerating on coming closer. Mercury slings around the Sun in just 88 days. Although Mercury orbits the Sun much more quickly than the Earth, it takes much longer for it to rotate. Mercury only rotates once every 59 days. 
one distinctive thing we should notice about mercury is this huge crater on its surface calaris basin with a diameter of 1550 km the surface temperature of mercury are very different the subsolar point reaches about 400 degrees celsius while on the dark side of the planet the temperature averages minus 163 degrees celsius so far mercury has been visited by two spacecraft nasa's mariner 10 and messenger those missions gave us much of what we know today but further ventures are in the works with high hopes of revealing more of Mercury's. Because of its brilliance, Venus has been observed by humans for thousands and thousands of years. Named after the ancient Roman goddesses of beauty, Venus is known for its exceptional brightness in the night sky. But behind this facade is a world of storms and infernos unlike anywhere else in the solar system. Venus, the second planet from the Sun, is very similar to Earth from a distance, but up close it's a very different world. Venus is about the same size as Earth, just slightly smaller. Venus is sometimes called as Earth's sister. Its average orbital radius around the Sun is 0.72 astronomical unit or roughly 108 million kilometers. The crust of Venus is dotted with thousands of volcanoes, including Maxwell Montes, a volcano almost as tall as Mount Everest. It has 167 volcanoes, which are over 100 km in diameter. An incredible 80% of Venus' surface is made up of cooled lava plains. Although Venus appears serene like a beautiful bright star at a distance, the surface of the planet is hazardous. Venus has a thick layered atmosphere. It's full of clouds that rain sulfuric acid. The atmosphere is made of greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide, which creates an extreme cases of global warming. They trap the sun's heat, causing surface temperature to rise over 460 degrees Celsius, making Venus the hottest planet in the solar system. Venus has no oceans. It is far too hot for water. Because of its dense atmosphere, the pressure on Venus' surface is 92 times greater than Earth's. Life may struggle to survive in the atmosphere of Venus. But it is this unforgiving environment that made Venus an icon of beauty. It reflects 70% of all the sunlight that reaches the planet, which is why Venus shines more brightly than any other planet or star in the night sky. Venus is also called as morning star and evening star. Venus is commonly misreported as an unidentified flying object. US President Jimmy Carter reported having seen an UFO in 1969 which later analysis suggested was probably Venus. Countless other people have mistaken Venus for something more exotic due to its startling brightness. Venus rotates very slowly only once every 43 days and it spins backward compared to the Earth and most other planets. That means if you are on Venus, sun would seem to rise in the west and set in the east. It is unclear why Venus rotates backwards compared to the rest of the planets. But it could be due to a big impact with another object billions of years ago, or tidal locking with the Sun, 
a tidal effect on the Venus senior atmosphere. Venus is so inhospitable, neither humans nor spacecraft are able to survive the planet's surface. More than 40 unmanned spacecraft have visited this infernal world. The most successful mission built to better withstand condition on Venus could only transmit data for 110 minutes, not quite 2 hours. Venaria projects by the Soviet were the first to successfully land on Venus. Venera 9 set back the first ever image of the surface of Venus. Venus, so illuminated in the darkness of space, still has much to reveal. Earth, the only planet known to maintain life. A product of scientific phenomena and sheer chance. This blue planet in space holds the past, present and future of our very existence. As intriguing as space is, you don't have to go far to find the most interesting, dynamic and beautiful celestial objects out there. Earth has a surface ocean of water, an oxygen-rich atmosphere and a comparatively powerful magnetic field. Even though we call it our home, there is still so much we have to learn about our own planet. So, what does make this planet so special? It has long been the talk of ancient scientists, philosophers and others as they tried to place us in the universe we live in. Although, the idea of a round earth had been put forward by Greek mathematicians in the 6th century BC. It wasn't until Aristotle's around 240 BC that the circumference of the earth was estimated. The 16th century brought about the heliocentric model where we discovered through the help of Nicholas Copernicus, Johannes Kepler and Galileo Galilei that the sun is the center of the solar system, not the earth. Today, we now know that we are the third planet from the sun and one of four terrestrial planets. Earth actually takes 365.25 days to orbit the sun once, which is why every four years we have a leap year to account for the 0.25 extra days in our year. Earth's rotation is roughly 23 hours and 56 minutes, not exactly 24 hours. This is because we use a solar day instead of sidereal day to measure our time. The Earth's rotational axis is roughly 23.5 degree to the plane of the solar system. This axial tilt is what goes Earth such varied seasons. Earth has a reasonably dense and compact atmosphere. It consists of mainly 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen and 1% argon with trace amounts of other gases like carbon dioxide. Water vapor is also present in the atmosphere. It is this water vapor that makes clouds in the atmosphere. Ozone is also present in a special layer in atmosphere called the ozone layer. This ozone absorbs a lot of the harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun, which helps permit life on land. Without it, Earth would be a dangerous place to go outside for life forms like us. The atmosphere also performs some important life-saving functions. The atmosphere provides useful gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, causing small meteors to burn up before striking the surface, and even moderates temperature around the globe. Without the atmosphere retaining some of the heat from the sun, the Earth would be a far chiller planet. The atmosphere also drives the water cycle which is one of the most essential life system for us. Earth has a comparatively thin crust, underneath which is a hot and active mantle. Underneath the mantle is the planet's core consisting of what is thought to be iron and nickel. Earth is the densest planet in the solar system and this is mainly due to the core. The core is also where the magnetic field of Earth originates. This magnetic field also serves life on the ground as it diverts solar winds around the planet and also to its poles causing beautiful aurora, the most 
common color for auroras on earth is green due to the solar winds interaction with atomic oxygen in the atmosphere earth has the largest moon related to the size of the planet in the solar system the moon influences our ocean tides through its own gravity which pulls at the water in our oceans however these tidal forces could also be the reason earth has such active plate tectonics so how does earth our home came into being and brought about life earth was neatly orbiting the sun as a rocky mass 4.5 billion years ago no organisms could survive there at that time radiation from the recent supernova kept the planet extremely hot oxygen was non existent in addition incredibly massive meteorites and asteroids frequently slammed onto the surface the earth got so hot it began melting heavier materials sank to the bottom and lighter ones rose to the top this transformation created the earth's layer core and mantle crust atmosphere and magnetic field without it earth would be blasted by harmful rays from the sun in the late hadean eon the earth was still in its late bombardment stage there is no life temperatures are extremely high with frequent volcanic activity and harsh environment the moon is formed around this time probably due to a protoplanet collision into earth in addition there is reason to believe that these collisions could have sparked the chemical building blocks for life dna instead of a molten state the earth started to cool down water vapor condensed to form oceans and the earth cooled down enough to create continents photosynthetic organisms appeared between 3.2 and 2.4 billion years ago and began enriching the atmosphere with oxygen single cell organisms consume the energy from the sun and as a waste product they fill the oceans and atmosphere with oxygen as oxygen fill the atmosphere earth's ozone layer thickened a thicker ozone layer enable life to diversify on land after they evolved humans have struggled to survive or maybe earth has 5 billion years to build the earth and only several years to rear it but anything else in space ever be as beautiful and welcoming as this our home planet planets visible to the unaided eye has been known to astronomers since ancient times it was first recorded by ancient egyptian astronomers about 4000 years ago mars is often called the red planet because of its reddish color to the ancient romans the red planet was a symbol of blood and war that is why mars was named for the ancient roman of war the story of mars began about 4.5 billion years ago when gas and dust swirled together to form the fourth planet from the sun its entire surface area is similar to all that of earth's continents combined much like its terrestrial cousin mars is dense and has a rocky composition today mars is dry desolate and cold with temperatures dropping as low as minus 225 degree fahrenheit or minus 142 degree celsius but billions of years ago the planet was much warmer more geologically active and had a watery surface lake beds and river valleys snake along the surface of mars indicating that liquid water was for a time present of all the planets in the solar system the seasons of mars are the most earth like due to the similar tilts of the two planets rotational axis this means mars has both summers and winters just like us the temperatures in different seasons can vary quite a lot from minus 143 degrees celsius at the polar winter gaps 
45 degrees Celsius in the equatorial summer. Another reason that Mars has such different temperatures is that its atmosphere is primarily made of carbon dioxide and is very thin, preventing it from holding on to much energy from the sun. There are no liquid water on Mars, but there are two polar ice caps made of large amounts of frozen water and sometimes there are even clouds made of water vapor much like on Earth. The iron minerals on the crust of Mars reacts with trace amounts of oxygen in the atmosphere, producing iron oxide which gives Mars its reddish appearance. As you can see from the photos from the rovers on Mars, everything really is reddish brown. Volcanoes such as Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system at three times the height of Mount Everest, once erupted lava. The only reason a structure like this is standing on Mars is because its gravity is reasonably weak. Olympus moons can be easily be seen from space. If we look at the topographical map, you can see it quite clearly. Mars also has the longest and deepest canyon in the solar system, which is called the Valles Marineris. Mars has two known moons, the Phobos and Deimos, which are smaller and irregular in shape. Compared to the moon on our Earth, they are much smaller. Phobos is the biggest of Mars moon and it's also the closest. Deimos on the other hand is very small and also very far away. Because Mars is farther from the sun, however, Mars takes much longer to travel once around the sun than Earth does, almost 687 days. Mars has such absolutely beautiful sunsets. Because of factors such as the presence of water, some scientists believe life may have existed on the red planet and may exist again. Since the 1960s, space programs from around the world have launched missions to Mars and attempts to understand the planet's past, present and potential for sustaining life. There are currently five orbiters circling Mars and two rovers exploring its surface, all sending data back to Earth. Life on another planet may well be out for the near future, but if any planet could give us hope, Mars may hold the key to the survival of humanity. Born from primordial stardust, 4.5 billion years ago, Jupiter was solar system's first planet. Jupiter is named after the Roman king of the gods. The ancients did not know precisely how big this planet was, but it turned out to be aptly named because it is the largest planet in the solar system, with more mass than all the other planets combined. It has a diameter 10 times that of the Earth and more than 1300 Earths could fit inside. The huge mass of Jupiter brings about an interesting phenomenon. The barrier center between Jupiter and the Sun is actually above the surface of the Sun at 1.068 solar radii from the Sun's center. I hear you ask, what is a body center? A body center is the center of mass between these two objects. With its huge size, Jupiter doesn't orbit anywhere close to the center of the sun. The orbit in fact looks more like this, with Jupiter and the sun rotating around the body center. As we know, Mars affects gravity, Jupiter has a huge gravity over twice that of Earth. This huge gravity is strong enough to tear asteroids apart and without Jupiter acting as a cosmic vacuum cleaner, life on Earth would have never been possible. 
Jupiter doesn't really have a surface. Most of the planet is simply gas. Jupiter is made of lots and lots of hydrogen and helium as well as lots of hydrogen rich gases like ammonia, methane and water. There is a huge layer of liquid hydrogen below the outer gaseous layer due to the high pressure produced by the immense gravity of the planet. Below all of this is a solid core made of iron, rock and water. Probably the most iconic feature of Jupiter is a crimson brown stone that's been raging for over 300 years. The Great Red Spot. It's a giant swirling vortex bigger than the entire Earth with wind speed of up to 400 km per hour. Another storm known as Red Spot Jr. is also found on Jupiter's atmosphere. Jupiter has a thin ring system which was not seen until the 1970s. The most impressive feature of Jupiter is its collection of moons. There are four very large ones which were discovered centuries ago by Galileo and are called Galilean satellites. Ganymede is the largest of these moons and the largest moon in the solar system. It's actually greater in volume than the smallest planet Mercury. It is a moon with an iron-rich liquid core. Its surface is covered with craters and it is the only moon known to have a magnetic field and is even thought to have a subsurface ocean of liquid water. Next one, Callisto is very similar to Ganymede. It is the most heavily cratered object in the solar system. Io is the moon that is closest to Jupiter, orbiting so closely that tidal forces are immense. Because of this, Io is covered with active volcanoes. Io is the most volcanically active object in the solar system. The smallest of the Galilean moons Europa is quite possibly the most interesting place on the solar system because it may be the best candidate for potential extraterrestrial life that we are aware of. It has the smoothest surface of any known solid object in the solar system. There is a vast ocean of liquid water under the frozen crust. There are also red cracks which indicate the presence of minerals in the water. Something else to note about Jupiter is its remarkably strong magnetosphere. It is 20,000 times stronger than Earth's. The strong magnetosphere can interest two things, producing magnificent auroras and protecting the four bigger moons from solar winds because they orbit within the magnetosphere. Jupiter is 778 million kilometers away from the sun on average and completes its orbit every 12 Earth years. It rotates very fast, faster than any other planet completing a rotation in only 10 hours. The axial tilt of the planet is only 3 degrees. This means it doesn't experience much change in seasons. Despite never achieving star status, it still formed a mini solar system of its own. Jupiter is also the third brightest object in the night sky after the moon and Venus. We can be glad Jupiter is the, not only for its beauty, but because in so many ways it is an asset to our solar system. With its gold color and stunning rings, Saturn is quite a planetary region. 
Saturn is the second largest of the eight planets and it is about 10 times as wide as Earth. Despite its size, Saturn is actually the lightest planet. It is predominantly made of the gases, hydrogen and helium. And because of its particular gaseous composition, Saturn is the only planet in the solar system that's less dense than water. If the planet were placed on an enormous ocean, it would be able to float. Saturn's gaseous makeup also means it has no true surface. At its center, the planet has a dense core of water, ice and rocky material, but it has no actual landmass. Instead, it's mostly made of gases, liquids and yellow ammonia crystals that swirl around the planet creating golden clouds and storms. Thanks to the Cassini probe, we have more astonishing information about this beautiful planet. Saturn has the second fastest wind in the solar system, reaching speeds of up to 1800 km per hour. Every 30 years, the planet produces what is called a great white spot, which is a unique but short-lived phenomenon that occurs once every Saturnian year. The largest storm on Saturn is at its North Pole. It's over twice the size of the Earth and shaped in a near-perfect hexagon. Saturn's ring system is the largest and most complex in the solar system. The rings are made of icy and rocky remnants from comets, asteroids and moons. Saturn's rings are thought to be remnants of the cloud of gas and dust that initially formed the planet. Some say the rings are comprised of debris from moons that entered within Saturn's Roche limit which in this context refers to the radius within which a moon will be torn apart by the gravity of the planet it orbits. The ring system is divided into seven group of rings. Saturn has fascinated scientists and amateur astronomers alike for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks and Romans who named the planet after their god of agriculture believed it was a star. It wasn't until the 17th century, after the telescope was invented, that scientists like Galileo Galilei, Christian Huygens, and Giovanni Cassini could take a much closer look and discovered that Saturn was a planet. Because of the Saturn's inhospitable environment, the planet cannot support life. But some of its moons might. The Saturn has the largest number of moons in the solar system. Enceladus, one of the Saturn's smallest moon, is covered in ice. Enceladus exhibits geyser activity, making it the smallest known geologically active object in the solar system. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is the only moon in the solar system with clouds and a dense atmosphere. The clouds rain down liquid hydrocarbons like methane and ethane, making Titan the only body in the solar system other than Earth to clearly have bodies of liquid on its surface. Both Titan and Enceladus have underground oceans that would make them potentially capable of sustaining life. Saturn's moons also play a role in shaping the planet's rings. Saturn also has a dead star orbiting it called Mimas. Saturn does have a magnetosphere which is strong enough to deflect solar wind from the sun. Saturn's magnetosphere, like Earth, provides magnificent aurora. On Earth, the light of aurora is mostly from oxygen atoms and nitrogen molecules. On Saturn, it is from hydrogen. 
the average orbital distance of saturn from the sun is 870 million miles and one year on saturn takes almost 30 earth years one day at the equator or the poles lasts about 10 hours and 40 minutes and everywhere else the day lasts 10 hours and 38 minutes this is because Saturn is indeed solid and is not rotating at the same speed all over. Saturn is the farthest planet that can be seen by humans without help from a telescope. Despite all that we have learned from Cassini, Saturn still remains a world of mystery. Uranus, the ice giant. Uranus is the seventh planet from the Sun from a distance of about 19.2 astronomical unit from the Sun, which means it's over 19 times farther away from the Sun than our Earth. Being this far away from the Sun means it's freezing cold. Uranus orbits the Sun every 84 Earth years, approximately the length of a human's entire life. This orbit causes each season of Uranus to last that much longer. Theoretically speaking, a human living on Uranus would experience the four seasons only once, but each for about 21 years. The first unique feature of Uranus is its name. All the planets are named after Roman gods except Uranus. It named after Greek god of sky, Uranus. The Latinized version of this word is what we use today, Uranus. Uranus' diameter is four times more than Earth's and the gravity of Uranus is slightly less than on Earth at 8.7 meter per second square. Uranus has an Earth-sized core made of iron and magnesium silicate. Approximately 80% of Uranus is a worldwide ocean of ice made of water ammonia and methane. These icy composition prevents Uranus from emitting much heat compared to other planets, making the planet solar system's coldest with atmospheric temperature of minus 224 degrees Celsius. The atmosphere is comprised of mostly helium, hydrogen and 2.3% methane. It's this methane that gives Uranus its aquamarine or cyan color. It also rains diamond on Uranus, solid diamonds. Uranus has a dramatic orientation. While the other seven planets spin on their axis, Uranus appears to roll along its equator. Its axial tilt is 97 degree in which polar regions point towards and away from the sun rather than upward and downward. One side of planet always faces the sun while the other is complete darkness. The poles get 42 years of continuous darkness followed by 42 years of daylight. This tilt is thought to be the result of Uranus collision with at least one celestial body during the solar system formation. Uranus rotates once every 17 hours and 14 minutes. Uranus is the third largest planet in the solar system and 63 Earth could fit inside it. Uranus, much like other large planets in our solar system, has rings. It has 13 very dark and young rings. Uranus has only been visited by spacecraft once and that was in 1986 by Voyager 2. Voyager 2 discovered a lot of the rings and moons of Uranus. Uranus has 27 non moons divided into three categories the 13 inner moons, the five major moons, and nine irregular moons. The moons of Uranus are named after the characters of William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. Titania is the largest moon of Uranus and the eighth largest moon in the solar system. Uranus and its many unusual features were a mystery to the ancients, and the planet was actually thought to be a star. But in late 18th century, astronomer 
William Herschel discovered that the celestial object was actually a new planet. The name Uranus was suggested by the astronomer Joan Allard Boyd. Unlike the rings and moons of other planets, which orbit their home horizontally, those of Uranus orbit in a vertical orientation along the planet's tilted equator, much like a Ferris wheel. Uranus also has an unusual magnetosphere, which is not from pole to pole. Therefore, it is not that effective in preventing the solar winds, but still produces beautiful aurora. Uranus, the most unique planet in the solar system, still remains an unsolved puzzle. Along the dark edges of the solar system, it floats. Angered by a star, but barely graced by its warmth, this traveler drifts alone as deceptively calm and elusive as the deep blue sea. Neptune is the eighth planet from the sun. It is the smallest of the gas giants and also the furthest away. Since Pluto acquired not a planet status, Neptune is the furthest planet from the sun. At about 30 times the distance between our star and the Earth, or 30 astronomical unit, or in other words, 4.5 billion kilometers. Because of this long orbit, it takes a huge 165 years to orbit the Sun once, which means we have only seen one Neptunian year since its discovery. As it is so far away, Neptune can't be studied easily by just looking through telescopes. It wasn't until 1989 when Voyager 2 arrived that a huge amount of information about the planet became available. The planet Neptune was mathematically predicted before it was directly observed by Uruban Leverge. Johann Gale was the astronomer who discovered Neptune using calculations by Urban Leverrier in 1846 at the New Berlin Observatory. Neptune has a solid core made of water, ice and silicate rock. The rest of the planet is believed to be a hot precipitous ocean of water, methane and ammonia ices surrounded by a layer of clouds. These clouds predominantly made of hydrogen and helium include traces of methane which gives this ocean world its rich blue color. Where the core and the mantle meet, the pressure is so great that the methane may break apart and diamonds are formed under the pressure. There could be a liquid carbon ocean with solid diamond bergs floating in it and diamonds raining down in the mantle like hailstones. Colossal storms are also formed on the planet. When Voyager 2 passed the planet by 1989, it saw the great dark spot, a storm about the size of Earth passing through its atmosphere. Unlike Jupiter's great red spot, Neptune's dark spot disappears and reappears again. Winds on the planet reach speeds of over 1200 miles per hour. Its axial tilt is 28 degrees meaning it's similar to Earth and Mars with 23 degrees and 25 degrees respectively. This means it has seasons similar to Earth and Mars too. Each season lasts more than 40 Earth years each. Neptune is the furthest planet from the Sun, so you would have thought it is also the coldest. But actually, Uranus is the coldest planet in our solar system. This is because Neptune radiates heat from within whereas Uranus radiates hardly any excess heat at all. This could be because of an Earth-sized celestial body crashing into Uranus billions of years ago which depleted all of its primordial heat. Like all other gas giants, Neptune also have a ring system. They are faint, dark and very hard to see. The innermost is a galley ring. Next is the first bright ring, Leverrier. Next to Leverrier is the Lassell ring and on the edge of this ring is the Arago ring. And lastly is the outermost and most researched ring, the Adams ring. Also revolving around the planet are 14 known moons. The moons of Neptune are named after the water deities in Greek mythology. 
Triton is the largest moon with ice volcanoes. Triton is also bigger than Pluto. Much is left to be discovered about Neptune, its unusual climate, rings and moons. Future missions to this mysterious icy world would have even more stories to tell.